So far we have discussed games which are one shot, that means they can be uh, completed in one specific round. So all the games that we have discussed uh, has this property that whenever the players choose their strategies the outcome happens and that is the end of the game. But we have also seen some examples of games, uh, for instance chess, where this is not the case. Uh, the players do not uh, choose their actions or strategies all at once. They look at the uh, the progression of the game. So the game does not end in one round. Uh, first one player uh, makes their move and then the second player moves, makes their move and so on. So this, uh, to represent games of this kind, which are sequential in nature, we need a richer representation of the games and that is what we are going to discuss in this uh, module. So this uh, sequence of actions, we'll sometimes call them as the history of the game. The, the first, first uh, representation type of, of uh, this kind of game uh, is called the perfect information extensive form games. So extensive form games it generally refers to the case where you are representing the game as a game tree. That is, it's not just uh, uh, represented in the form of a matrix uh, and uh, it automatically means that there are uh, multiple stages inside this game. To, uh, to represent that, we use the term extensive form. Uh, the perfect information uh, comes from the fact that all the players can look at the history uh, and look at all the moves of the other players. In, in, uh, in some sense, uh, every state of the game, in this uh, every intermediate state of the game, in this extensive form game, is completely visible to all the players. So this is, uh, this is true for games like chess where you can see the board position and whatever move the other player has made. But it is not uh, true for games for instance like cards where you can see what, uh, what your hand is and you can see uh, what cards have been played on the table. But you cannot see the hands of the other players. Uh, you may have a guess but you still have certain amount of uncertainty uh, what is the exact state of the game. So those kind of games we are going to discuss later. Uh, so first is the, the perfect information game where everything, every move and every state of the game is uh, visible to all the players. So um, because this is a richer representation, uh, expect a little more notation. We'll develop all those things and try to explain uh, that as detailed as possible. So let's look at the example of a brother-sister chocolate division game. So suppose a mother wants to divide uh, two chocolates, two indivisible chocolates, let's assume that the, uh, each chocolate cannot be divided into further pieces uh, and uh, it, uh, the mother gives this chocolate to the elder brother and asks him to divide it in the way such that the sister can, can be happy with it, both of them can be happy with it. So the brother has uh, uh, these choices, either it can pick both two uh, chocolates to himself and give nothing to the sister. It can divide it one one or it can give the, uh, both the chocolates to the sister. And sister can, can uh, by looking at this uh, division, uh, it has two choices. Uh, either it can accept that division or it can reject that division. And now the uh, mother has set the rule uh, uh, that uh, if the sister is unhappy and rejects this uh, uh, your uh, division offer, then uh, both of you uh, get nothing. So I'll take away all, uh, both the chocolates and uh, you, you won't get anything. So uh, this is the se setting of the game uh, in words. Now we are going to represent uh, this as an extensive form game. How should we do it? So we can draw a game tree as we did in the case of uh, Chase. So uh, at the first node, the brother is the player and all the subsequent nodes, uh, subsequent intermediate nodes uh, in this cases, the sister is the player and uh, this action is essentially uh, whatever the brother has divided uh, so 2 0 means it has given uh, both of it has uh, kept 2 for himself and 0 for the sister 1 1 means it's equally divided 0 2 as we uh, it's uh, evident what it means now the sister at each of these stages can either say accept or reject 
if it accepts the the corresponding division is uh, uh, is the um, final uh, utility of uh, of both these players and if it rejects in all these cases they both of them get zero because the both the chocolates are taken away so how should we formally capture this so uh, like normal form games we will also represent the uh, uh, perfect information extensive form game using uh, a tuple but now the tuples will have some more numbers so we still have the set of players state of uh, actions and uh, a, a set of utilities but there are certain uh, additional things so uh, let's look at this one by one so first is the script h which is the sequence of all actions or histories uh, sequence of actions rather um, so it's not just one action for for the player it's the sequence of action uh, of all the of all the players so if you look at uh, a specific uh, history so let's say if this is the history then all the sequence of actions that led to this path in the game tree is considered the the history of that game similarly if you pick any intermediate node then this part is the is the history so uh, it satisfies certain properties the first thing is the null uh, the empty uh, uh, action must all, uh, already be in this uh, set script age that means uh, the the origin node should be inside this history the second uh, condition is that if we have some history uh, which is in this uh, history set age then every subsequence uh, of uh, age uh, starting from the root uh, should also be a member of a script of h so this means that uh, if you are if you are uh, looking at this kind of a history so where there are two uh, actions so action one and action two uh, then uh, any history so here there exists only one sub history which looks at just this action that should also be in the history set and we are going to uh, uh, name a specific uh, type of history uh, uh, to be a terminal history so this type of histories are called terminal history so what what it is so it is a sequence of actions let's say it has uh, passed already uh, t rounds so in the first round of the 0th round uh, the player has some player has played a0 in in the first round uh, the next player has played a1 and so on until t minus 1 uh, the action t minus uh, a t minus 1 was played and you cannot find any other feasible action at in that set uh, in that action set such that if you append that action at the end of this previous history that will uh, remain in h so in other words uh, it is already reached a terminal node so there does not exist any uh, any other action that you can uh, append and still be inside that uh, feasible uh, uh, sequence of uh, actions set so if that happens that kind of a history we call the terminal history so in order to distinguish uh, those nodes uh, or, or those histories uh, so we are making a specific uh, name for that uh, sub history so all the histories uh, where you uh, actually reach the terminal uh, node we, we are going to call the set of all terminal histories and this is represented by z the next function that we are going to define is uh, script x as uh, shown in this uh, in this uh, tuple here so uh, what does uh, this function do this is nothing but the action selection function so uh, its purpose is to find out at a non terminal history what is the feasible set of actions available to a player uh, so uh, because at the end at the terminal history there should not be any action left because there is no player who will play at that that's the end of the game so for all the non terminal nodes uh, you uh, so if you apply this function x it will give you the set of actions that is available to that non terminal node so for instance if you if you apply this function x to a history uh, non terminal history h then it will give you a set let's say a0 a1 a2 which is a uh, feasible set of actions that you can play at that uh, at that level and now the next thing is who will play those actions so that is given by this function which is the player function so this is the the next entry in this tuple it is telling you that who will uh, uh, who is going to play there so again the non terminal histories uh, 
uh, and it is mapping to the set n so this is giving you the player who will play and it has this uh, this feasible actions uh, and finally we have the utility for each of these players and the utilities are going to be defined only at the terminal nodes because that's the end of the game and that is when the utilities are realized uh, for every non-terminal node there is no utility associated so now it is the uh, time to talk about the strategy of a player uh, we have uh, informally said in, in, when we discuss the game of chess uh, as a mapping from the uh, uh, from the state of the game to the set of actions but now we can we can use uh, the notation that we have already discussed so uh, what is uh, this uh, strategy set so first uh, we look at a specific history so let's say the uh, the history uh, um, is uh, is age and also we know that this particular player we are focusing on player i uh, that player is a player at that uh, at that history so we look at all possible such histories where player i is going to play and take the cartesian product of the corresponding uh, uh, action sets so in the in the previous case if you look at the uh, this example so let's say we, we are looking at the second player, let's say sister. So sister, let's say, is the second player and brother is the is the first player. Then sister is playing at three non-terminal nodes here, here and here. So therefore, the sister's uh, uh, strategies uh, will be defined by a tuple of three things as uh, we have defined here uh, as uh, this shows. So it will be the let's say the first history is h1 so uh, that uh, that was uh, 2 0 the second history was 1 1 and these are these are nothing but uh, the actions that has been taken so far so 2 0 is one action that is one history 1 1 and 0 2 is the third history so if you look at the h3 which is 0 2 then you know that uh, uh, these are the three places where player two is going to play and therefore there will be a couple of three things uh, in this uh, in its strategy set so s2 uh, will be the elements which is like uh, let's say accept 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 a couple of three things similarly accept accept reject is another history uh, another uh, strategy for player two and so on you can fill it up with all possible uh, such cases so let us uh, 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 do a uh, kind of a uh, quick uh, review of all these uh, parts, all the components of this perfect information extensive form game uh, by looking at the same example that we have started. So what is the uh, what is the, um, um, the the set of players in this case? So we are representing the same game, the, uh, the extensive perfect information extensive form game using the notation that we have done. So there are two players, player one and player two, which is the brother and the sister respectively. Now the action sets are uh, actions, possible actions are this two zero one one zero one and accept or reject. So this is essentially taking the union of all possible actions that is available inside this uh, game. Now you know the histories, <clears throat> of course the null history is the 0th history from which it starts. Then you have the histories of 2, 0, that is the first level um, of this game. So this is the this is one history. So this history is being represented by 2, 0, similarly 1, 1 and uh, 0, 2. And then you have these terminal histories which are 2, 0, uh, comma a. So once you take that, you reach this particular um, uh, terminal history. Similarly, two zero comma r, and uh, it is just filling up the rest of the things. Now we are just taking out all these terminal histories, all these nodes at the end, and uh, calling that as the set, the set of uh, terminal histories. Now, what are the action sets that are action available uh, for uh, for the players uh, at each of these histories? Uh, so x of phi which is the root node where uh, this player is playing so it has three actions two zero one one and zero two and uh, at every uh, at every history so let's say at the history two zero uh, the se the sets in this case are equal so both uh, uh, all of this uh, x uh, two zero one one and zero two are all a comma r so because the second player is uh, taking the same set of actions it has the same set of actions at every 
second round of this game. Now, what do we know is the player, the first player is playing at the at the 0th node, uh, the root node, and at every other uh, non-terminal history, player 2 is going to play. That is represented by this function here. Now, what do we have? We have this utilities, uh, 2, 0, uh, comma, A. Uh, this utility at the terminal node is given by 2, uh, the utility of player when the um, uh, terminal history is 1, comma, 1, and a so this is the utility for player one and for all the other uh, terminal histories all the other terminal histories in this case the utility is zero you can verify that similarly for player two at this two um, terminal history the utility is positive and that has been listed here all the other utilities are zero for that player so now the uh, the, the interesting part is that what is the strategy of player one so the strategy, so the, this player is playing only at the uh, uh, non-terminal history of phi, so that is the root node, and it has three actions available to it, uh, so uh, that is given by this, this one, and that is going to be the strategy set for player one. So that means if it is at zero, which of these uh, things it, it can pick is given by S1, while for player two, as we have just explained, uh, it's a Cartesian product of three sets because it is uh, it is a player at three different non-terminal histories, and therefore it it will be given uh, giving this kind of a uh, strategy set for this second player. Now, what we can do? So this is the uh, the representation of uh, this game, the perfect information uh, extensive form game. Now uh, we'll always try to connect between different notions of uh, uh, of representing the game. Uh, it, it is uh, it is more convenient to expl express this uh, this game the game that we have just discussed in an uh, extensive form but it is not impossible to represent the same game in, in a normal form so in fact we can do that and we'll we'll see that uh, uh, this perfect information extensive form game can be actually represented as a normal form game because now we have the strategies uh, sets for player one and player two but we will also show that that is not the most optimal way of representing this uh, game. Because if you uh, write down now uh, uh, the player 2 has a bunch of strategies and player 1 has 3 strategies, you can fill in the, the corresponding, uh, uh, corresponding numbers in this matrix. Uh, notice that whenever uh, these 2 players are picking some uh, strategy, so let's say strat uh, player 1 is picking the strategy uh, 0, 0,2 and the second player is uh, picking the strategy, uh, let's say RAA, right? Now, uh, this uh, immediately gives the end of the game. It, it uh, immediately says uh, what is the outcome because uh, the first player is picking 0, 2 and the second player at the third. So it is it is essentially uh, happening at, the, at this uh, uh, non-terminal history. So 0, 2 and then it is accepting it. So therefore the utility is going to be 0, 2. So therefore, if you look at uh, 0, 2 and the corresponding RAA, you see the, the utility is being written as 0, 2. So that is how this matrix has been populated. Now if you look at uh, this game carefully, uh, you can uh, come back and uh, uh, redo some of the uh, uh, some of the uh, predictable guarantees that we have given for this uh, this kind of games, and one of them were pure strategy Nash equilibrium. So we can find out a pure strategy Nash equilibrium for this normal form game, and uh, there are few uh, instances which I will point to. So you can find out all possible Nash equilibrium, but you you can see that there are certain uh, outcomes like. Uh, uh, 2 comma 0 and RRA is a Nash equilibrium, a pure strategy Nash equilibrium. Similarly, um, this is also a, a pure strategy Nash equilibrium. Uh, so there are various such uh, cases. 2 comma 0 RRR is also a Nash equilibrium. This is also uh, quite interesting. So some of this Nash equilibrium that we have uh, uh, represented here are not really very credible. So, for instance, if you pick this uh, example of 2 comma 0 and uh, RRA, uh, uh, this is uh, not quite reasonable uh, because if it ever, so how can this RRA be uh, understood? So, it means that uh, this player, when it is at this stage, is playing R 
and when it is at this stage displaying R and uh, finally uh, at this stage it is uh, picking A which is the axel. Now why should a player, uh, so let's say this sister will uh, uh, reject this offer if it ever ends up having uh, uh, ends up in this uh, particular non-terminal state. It's always better because it is getting at least uh, 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 the outcome of 1 1 where it can get uh, an utility of 1 by rejecting it gets 0. So this is not really even though uh, when you represent this in the normal form game uh, you have this um, you have this uh, case where you end up having this uh, particular outcome as a, a pure strategy Nash equilibrium but that uh, pure strategy Nash equilibrium is not really giving much information and in some sense this uh, representation of the normal form game and its equilibrium uh, concepts are, uh, are not considering the fact that uh, this is a sequential game uh, and uh, the sister or the second player has complete information about uh, about the current state of the game and it can pick the action accordingly. So uh, that is what we are going to do. So we are uh, not going to use uh, so for this kind of games where the information is completely available to all the players at every stage of the game will not uh, transform them into normal form games rather we will uh, go and find some other kind of uh, solution concepts or other kind of equilibrium concepts uh, that is uh, that will be more appropriate for this set. Also I would like to remark that this representation of this uh, uh, extensive form game uh, this representation of, uh, uh, of transforming that extensive form game into a normal form game it has a huge redundancy. You can already see that the uh, space, the strategy space uh, for all these players are actually blowing up and if there were uh, more levels and more players then it would have blown up even, uh, even uh, easily. Uh, but EFG in that case is much more succinct representation of the game.